Carrie Brownstein. We um, are talking about Transparent and Portlandia today. You've had such a busy year in television. What's that been like? Um, it's been very exciting. Um, both shows I'm so fond of, but they're so different. So they allow me to kind of um, explore different um, sides of myself as a performer, as an actor. Um, one, of course, is a little bit absurd, but allows me to play a lot of characters, that being Portlandia. And then with uh, Transparent, it's nice to kind of give myself over to someone else's vision. Uh, and because I don't, I don't write on the show, whereas I write on Portlandia. So it was wonderful to work with Jill Soloway and Gabby Hoffman and J.D. Plus, and I really enjoyed Transparent a lot. Yeah, and like I guess like in pretty much every scene you're in Portlandia, you're with Fred. Um, but in Transparent, like it's a bit of a bigger ensemble, a bigger cast of the show. What what was that like? Um, getting settled into sort of like acting not just with Fred. Well, I, <clears throat> right. I think the, the process with Transparent is very immersive, and you know it requires I think a huge amount of faith and trust um, <clears throat> in the writing in the story. Uh, which is very easy to have when you're working with someone as, as visionary as Jill. <clears throat> um, it's also, you know, working with, with Gabby Hoffman, she's such a natural. <clears throat> she is just, it's, it's just very exciting. There's a lot of energy. She, she surprises me. Um, and I just really enjoyed having the opportunity to kind of, you know, delve further into a single character because I'm just focusing on Sid and her story and her background and what makes her tick. And that was a real luxury, um, <clears throat> just as much as working with an ensemble, just to be able to have that hyper focus with one person. Hmm. And let's talk about your character, Sid, and what makes her tick and uh, what makes her work. What, what do you think's behind that and, and what do you think her character's motivations are? Well, I think... You know, Sid is someone who's been on the periphery of, of this family since um, they were in high school. And I think that, you know, Sid has always felt this sense of kind of jealousy and, and just kind of wanting to be more part of the family. You know, she's always kind of been on the outside. So I think part of her motivation is that kind of that way that observers and outsiders have to kind of maneuver their way around the periphery of something. And I think in the way that she, um, you know, with the uh, Pfefferman siblings, you know, she's always kind of played them a little bit against each other because I think, you know, part of what drives her is this wanting to belong. And that's a very deep seated feeling, but I don't think she's always going about it in the right way. She fumbles a little bit. Um, because she just she wants a sense of family that I think she hasn't been able to have otherwise. So, yeah, it's a lot of um, it's a little treacherous for her sometimes. Do you have a favorite moment from a character from the from season one of Tra Transparent? Well, definitely the the media scene for me was when Sid confronts Allie about um, you know her feelings and 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 kind of the sense that she has not been really seen by Allie, that she's been taken for granted, that, you know, <clears throat> all the time she's been there have been sort of overlooked. And it was a difficult scene to do. There was a lot of, um, of crying and just tenderness there. And um, <clears throat> I think, you know, Sid felt very exposed and I felt very exposed as a, per as a performer, but it was very rewarding. It was a fun scene to do. Mm. And how did the role in Transparent come about? How did you come to get involved in that project? Um, well, Jill and I had sort of been circling around each other for a while. <clears throat> we were mutual fans of one another. And we had a meeting in Los Angeles, just a casual sort of hangout where she talked about Transparent as, and was interested in kind of creating a role for me on the show. I was very flattered. I had I had seen the pilot. I had read the the screenplay for the pilot, and we just kind of worked <clears throat> from the ground up. And and she and and the other writers kind of you know made you know created Sid and and um, but to have somebody create something with me in mind just was uh, such a privilege. I felt so grateful. Hmm.
Yeah. Um, and I, I guess like this is really a show that in some ways was ahead of the conversation with all the Caitlyn Jenner stuff that's happened recently. It seems like more timely than ever some of these um, identity issues and uh, discussions in society and in culture. Um, what what is uh, what is that? What do you think the show Transparent means in for? I guess. Uh, in society. Yeah. Okay, you cut out for a second at the end, but I think you said what is it what does it mean yeah <clears throat> right now well um you know i think i think it it it's part of a conversation it's part of a dialogue that um if anything i mean first and foremost it exists you know as a piece of of art it's television it's it's about a family i think it helps to kind of normalize um differences and normalize the idea of, you know, expanding the notion of, of what it means to be a person, to be a woman, to be a man, <clears throat> to be a family. Um, and I think it's helped kind of create a, a conversational centerpiece for people that, you know, wherever they are in their lives, <clears throat> that they can kind of use transparent or reflect upon the show as a means of, you know, starting a discussion or, and whether that's a discussion specifically about transgender issues or just about any kind of family, to me the Pfeffermans are in some ways just a typical family. Um, but it is exciting to be part of a show that means a lot to many people and um, you know feels incendiary in a lot of ways. Hmm. What, what's uh, the funnest thing about working on Transparent? Working with Gabby and Jay, I just, um, you know, most of my scenes are with, with Josh and Allie Pfefferman. <clears throat> they're both just funny. They're, they're weirdos, and I feel like a weirdo, and we just kind of get together and play. There, there's a real, um, as much as the show is, is serious and heartfelt, there's also just this frivolity to it. There's a sense of, of freedom and playing, and I think it's just really amazing to be on set with those guys. They make me laugh and yeah, they're just, they're silly. Well, speaking of our uh, weirdos, you got to play a couple on Portlandia this past season, uh, especially in the final episode where some weirdos got arrested. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, season five of Portlandia, you've been working on it for so, for so long. Um, now it's really like an established show and the, uh, what what is that like? We spoke with Fred uh, a couple of days ago, and he said, "What a what a privilege, what a joy it is to be making art with you." What is it like to be making art with Fred? Um, it's very joyous, and it's full of optimism. You know, I think that um, something that I've learned from Fred is just this notion of saying yes and kind of getting over certain fears and. You know, I think there's so many characters that we play that we kind of have to dive into them with a certain fearlessness. Otherwise, you know, we can't kind of can't assemble these these scenes. And um, I just I love how uh, kind of sensitive he is as a performer. You know, and he he seems to when he does an impression or he creates a character, it's almost like he's not just figuring out who the person is, but who they want to be. And I think that's an interesting way of approaching a character. It's like, what is, what does this person secretly hope that you see in them? And and um, I think we exist in the world a lot like that, like you know, hoping people see the best in us. And um, I love the way Fred approaches characters like that. And and I think that that I've been able to learn from that too. Yeah, he said you both share a real optimism, but you've still got a thunder and a like punk rockers, and that doesn't go away, um, which is great um, because you both have like musical sort of uh, backgrounds as as well. Uh, is that how you feel about the show? Yeah, I mean, I I think that you know the way that that Portlandia kind of it, we use absurdity to sort of explore like small moments like minutia or sometimes unexplainable things but at the core of that is something that's very earnest but also I something that's a little feisty you know I think what kind of keeps us driven and keeps us kind of 
just making this kind of angular show is just the, the part of Fred and I that feel discomfited, that feel <clears throat> like a little agitated. And I think that's actually a nice <clears throat> way to keep the stakes feeling high. You know, it's like you always have like this little like scratch on your collar, like your tags bugging you or something. And it's like, it just adds this weird, I don't know, just aggravation or irritation to the scenes. And I think that's good for exploring people's, you know, relationship to their environment. So yeah, I guess we, we just, we're feisty, we're scrappy people, Fred and I always have been. Yeah, it, it is interesting. It's a show for real innocence, but also with a real edge mm -hmm. to it. Um, and I, I guess, um, and we sp speaking of Fred uh, yesterday, he had three questions to ask you. Um, no, I'll, I'll, yeah, I've, I'll, seen, I've been with Fred all day. He didn't tell me this. <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask them throughout the, uh, throughout the interview and you can try to guess which ones are, which ones are friends. Okay. okay. Um, let's talk a bit about the Emmys uh, last year. Portlandia has done so well at the Emmys and each year it's built on, um, it's built on the nominations it's got. It's got more nominations every year than the year before. Last year you got five. Fred broke through in supporting actor in a comedy series. That must have been really exciting. What's it been like getting that support from, from the awards groups and for the Emmys in particular? Well, I think we just feel so grateful. Again, you know, we're, we're a show with uh, a small budget. We um, have a small crew. We have a small group of writers. And, you know, to get that kind of recognition just – is still kind of surreal you know we never take for granted the fact that we're being recognized um by something you know like by the industry in which we work we would we would do this anyway but it it really makes us um very proud and it's definitely yeah we feel very lucky it's weird <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this year we've got some Emmy upheaval as they've created a variety sketch category, uh, which, which will uh, maybe uh, benefit your show quite a bit. What do you think about the creation of that new category? Well, I think it's it was a really great move by the Academy. I mean, I think we all in in the sketch world felt a little dubious being in the same category especially as a writer as the writers of the colbert report or the daily show you know and or letterman you know the, those are writers that create especially on those daily shows they create content for every night of the week you know five nights a week it's just apples and oranges you know it's it's like you have to tip your hat every time the colbert report or john stewart's show would win you just like of course what a you know what a cultural phenomenon <clears throat> but certainly so much different than what Schumer is doing or Key and Peele or Portlandia. <clears throat> so it's nice to kind of, you know, have these, this new tributary that we can kind of hang out in. Yeah, it's, it's, especially at the Emmys, that becomes very apparent when they go through all the nominees for writing and stuff. And these shows have 20 names that they're rattling, like they're going down the line of, and then it gets to Portlandia and they just read out five. <laughs> I know. We're, I always think like we're not even just the underdog. We're like the flea on the underdog. That's how I feel when they're reading off those names. Yeah. Well, with this new category, SNL will be moving over to the variety sketch as well. So you've got still one sort of massive, big, like sort of TV institution. And then you'll yeah. have the whole lot of little upstarts competing against Saturday Night Live probably. So that'll be a fun category. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was that like to see Fred get nominated last year? It was wonderful. It was very exciting. I mean, I think he he is a very um, intuitive, uh, agile, very brilliant performer. And I think, you know, with all the work that he did in television last year, and particularly in Portlandia, it was I was very happy for him to get recognized. Um, I think he's he's just he's very skilled, and I think he's very well respected. Um, you know, by his peers. So I, it was, it was a big moment for him and for me as his friend and for our show, it felt really great. Yeah. And, um, I guess, um, you could get into the supporting actress category this year. He's now broken through as a, you know, Portland actor. What, what would that mean if you got nominated for supporting actress this year? I mean, it, it would mean a lot. It would be, it would be very, very flattering. It would be a, 
a wonderful recognition. Again, these categories, and, and there's so many nominees, there's so many amazing actors uh, on these shows that, you know, to even sort of exist in this wonderful time in television, uh, that feels kind of like an, a reward enough in some ways, you know, but it would be, um, yeah, it would be awesome. Can't, can't say it wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. um, now, um, you, you're in, um, you're in uh, Portland. Are you in Portland now for season six? We're actually writing in LA. So I'm in our writers, mm -hmm. in our office right now. Yeah. And um, did you, uh, so you're in the office down in LA, but you'll be going to Portland soon. Are you going to be driving or flying to Portland? Um, I'm going to be flying to Portland. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Do you, do you often drive up there or do you always fly? Is that a question from Fred? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, that is a random question. Yeah. <laughs> what a logistical question. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you the truth. My car is actually down here and my dog is down here, but I'm going to have a friend of mine drive my dog in my car home. Maybe that's why Fred wanted you to ask me that question. Um, <laughs> so I'll be flying. Here's me up here. And then here's my dog and my car. We're like this. I'm in the air and they're on the ground. Yeah, oh, that's good. I, yeah, I think the Fred questions might be somewhat easy to guess, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see as we move on. Let's talk about some of the stuff from Portlandia season five. Uh, the, I know your head's now in season six a bit. But let's talk about some of the some of the good moments from season five and uh, see just what you remember about them and how they came about and things like that. Um, some of, some of these in Portland are sort of the smaller moments that are quite memorable, like something like the post office scene, uh, where you're going to the post office to pick up your package. How did that scene come about? Um, the, the post office scene, you know, we were, we were thinking about how odd is, it is when these, these sort of institutions that we've come to rely on as, and just sort of assume that they'll be there perennially and that they're these fixtures of, of you know, American cities and um, sort of the fabric of our of our cities um, intrinsic to them start to feel very decayed. Like they just start to feel like they're part of some old world. And so we started imagining the post office as, as sort of this haunted, like zombie-like place. You know, that's sort of Kafka-esque, and it's how it's just this labyrinth that you could just get sucked into. And so we had uh, yeah Vanessa Bear come in and try to pick up a, you know, she has a slip to come pick up a package and she goes down a real scary uh, rabbit hole. Um, and, and Fred and I played employees. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's definitely based on a few uh, rare experiences to the post office, which can be a little bit, um, well, for lack of a better word, just lengthy. Usually those visits are very lengthy. Like if you have to go to the post office, you should give yourself about two hours. And you got this real like balance, like different types of things in Portland. You got the like the post office, which is a fairly relatable uh, everyday sort of experience that you're making light of. And then you've got the completely absurd, like breaking into Sea World to steal a fish. Like, yeah. uh, how how do you like how do you weigh those two sort of aspects of the show? I mean, I think the the ideal sort of Portlandia sketch for us is one that starts with a relatable premise, gets to a place of absurdity in order to hopefully shed some light on what the situation is, and then goes way off into a surreal direction and ideally lands back at something relatable. So I think we really enjoy when those, um, you know, having something weird like the SeaWorld episode, it does kind of start out with this fairly relatable premise, you know, people taking issue with SeaWorld and wanting to go down there and then everything goes wrong. So, Yeah. Uh, we've also, uh, you've also got two things to balance in the show. One is you've got episodes like Tony and Candace, which just follow two characters and is very like sort of like one storyline. And then you've got like the dead pets episode at the end where mm -hmm. of the season where you've got like as many characters as you can fit sort of almost in there. And you've got a whole lot of different little storylines that tie together. Um, how do you sort of juggle those two different approaches to the show? You know, I think that we don't feel too married to, to the form. You know, I, I love um, feeling like 
the whole notion of sketch is that it can be very elastic. So we can, and I think we, the, uh, you have to kind of trust that the audience will follow you, whether you're doing a, an episode that's a lot of different sketches or you're doing, you know, one storyline. And I think we've been fortunate that the audience has followed us. And I think it just depends, you know, if we love dealing with character in terms of our writing and, um, and in terms of performance to be able to spend, you know, a whole episode with, you know, as Tony and Candace or Lance and Nina. So it really just, it depends what serves the story. You know, if we can tell something in three minutes, we'll do that. But if it feels like we want to really let it breathe, we'll, we'll write a whole episode. Oh, my, this, a dog is coming in here. Sorry. Is this, is this your dog, Carrie? Yes. He's at the office today. Okay. How, how is he doing at the moment? He's good. You know, he's very, he has like arthritis now and he's like kind of older, but he's doing great. He's happy to be down here with me in LA. Okay. Very good. Um, that was another question from Fred. How your dogs well, are doing? It's like, to, it's like the dog knew that that question was coming up and yeah. he was like, I, I need my minute in the spotlight. Yeah. I thought there was no way I was going to ask that without you picking it up, but the dog really, uh, really helped out there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, another, another fun episode was the episode where you had Paul Simon um, in and you're planning a karaoke party with, uh, with Fred. Uh, or you're, you're invited to a karaoke party and you take it so seriously. How did that yeah. sort of idea come about? Well, I think as a premise, you know, we all can overthink something that should be so fun or so simple and we can get really bogged down in the details and in you know sort of making something a competition that that actually should just be about in enjoyment or togetherness and often i find that you know the most sort of stressful and competitive situations start out very well intentioned you know a birthday party and everyone's competing about getting the best gifts or you know, baby showers can be the same way or, you know, anything can kind of turn into this very fraught and anxious situation. So, yeah, we, I've been to karaoke nights where people have been clearly practicing. So we, we wanted to take that to the extreme. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always like, like if there's a costume party, you spend like all week like plan, getting the perfect costume, then you get to the party, like no one comments on it because no one no. cares. Everyone just is there to get drunk. Yeah. Yeah, the party's not even fun. The party's the least fun part of the week. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's good. Did you have a favorite moment from season five? Um, there were a couple. I mean, I loved shooting the story of Tony and Candace, which uh, goes into the backstory of how Tony and Candace met. And we really wanted to film it um, like a, a genre piece, you know, something like Working Girl or those like classic, like, New York movies like Baby Boom where you know, it's just like here's the skyline and then we're wearing like you know shoulder pads and we've got the bangs and it was just it was really fun you know the DP kind of set the patina in a certain way and it was just it was the dance off shooting that weird dance off was was really fun um, and then I loved um, the Doug Becomes a Feminist episode and I love that male feminist meeting where they were like, we're going to solve feminism for women. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, was, there was just some great little moments like that. I, we really had a, a wonderful time with season five. Mm. And it's really like, it, it, it seems like, especially like a better in SNL, it's like 40 years old, such a new show, but you have uh, been on the air for five years. You are really established now. You, you're probably, if you get nominated in the variety sketch category, be like maybe the second oldest show in that category you yeah you'll be one of the veterans um yeah. what yeah what what's that like having had that room to grow as a show and and evolve and just throw more ideas at the wall i guess mm -hmm. well i think there's there's different things to value with each season you know there's obviously that advantage that excitement of being new you know and um <clears throat> there's kind of that energy that you that people bring to your show as an audience when you're new <clears throat> and you have to kind of figure out what to sort of explore and, and how to grow in, in the third and fourth seasons and for us in the fourth, fifth and sixth season. So I think there is something exciting about getting the opportunity to, to kind of change and to try to make this, you know, raise the stakes again and to, you know, challenge yourself 
Um, so it becomes about something else each season, but the, the challenges remain. And it is important to feel like you're doing something fresh, you know, even if you're coming back on the fifth and sixth season. Uh, so yeah, we'll be we'll be the veterans there right after SNL. SNL at 40, Portlandia at five, Schumer at three, you know, it's just, yeah. and then and then a, a show that just started last week. Yeah, no, we've got, uh, and also I, I guess like another fun episode was the episode where you um, put in the, te- well, it's the same episode as the post office one where you put the um, technology and you install the, uh, the house uh, where like everything should work on the iPad and, and it doesn't. Yeah. The Sonos, the Sonos nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was based on actually an, an Airbnb I stayed at um, in LA where I literally could not figure out the system and, and the landlord just kept saying, well, why don't I send my guy over? And I just kept asking for a note, like, please, if you give me written instructions, I promise you I'll figure it out. He would not give me a note. He kept sending this guy over and I was like, I'm going to end up marrying this guy. Like he's going to be in my house so often. He's going to be like a roommate. And so, yeah, we, it, it seemed like I spent more time with this like Sonos expert than I did with like any of my friends in LA. Yeah, it's uh like I remember when like my dad got a Sonos and like it, how excited people get about this sort of like new technology that's meant to make everything easier and they like sort of spend a lot of time explaining how good it's going to be and then an equal amount of time trying to figure it out and dealing with it not working. Yeah, it's it was pretty ridiculous. So it was it was it's fun to have something that you can take from real life and put it through the kind of <clears throat> silliness that Portlandia aspires to. Mm. And speaking of technology, is it cold where you are? Do you have an air conditioner in the room you're in? No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm warm. Okay. That's good. Um, that was another question from Fred. Oh, I was like, wow, what a random question from this guy. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> you know what? He's asking that because our air conditioning is actually broke. Oh, okay. Oh, well, there we go. There, there are all the Fred questions now. Um, um, I guess if you were to get nominated for, uh, for Portlandia, what episode would you submit to the judges? Do you have an idea? Um, probably the Tony and Candace episode or, oh, wait, hold on. Someone's bringing me a plug. That's all right. Because otherwise we're going to lose, I'm going to lose power on this computer. Oh, oh no. no, this is the wrong one. Oh shoot. Okay. Well, if you lose me, I feel like we're almost at 30, 30 yeah, minutes. We're pretty, um, we're pretty, we've got, we've got only one or two more questions. Tony and Candace, the story of Tony and Candace or Lance's engage, Lance's mom's engagement, um, where it's, um, me and Justin Long. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, Look that's at how profe- I mean, I'm just, this is a real lack of professionalism on my part. No, no, no. It's fun. Okay. It's there. good. Oh, saved. Shows us, that, yeah, shows that even people on TV need to charge their computers. To run. Yes, a lot. It's weird. A lot of people thought that people on TV never had to charge computers, that their computers were self charging, yeah. or that they just, every time their battery ran out, they just bought a new computer. But that's yeah. not true. That's not yeah. true. You're being very humanized in this interview. Yeah. Um, Thank you. You are, you know, and it, I, I'm glad your dog was here. Because um, yesterday we interviewed Matt Walsh from Veep, and he couldn't find his dogs. He was going to show us his dogs, and so hopefully he's found them now. Yeah, Matt, I hope you found your dogs. Yeah. Anyway, um, just uh, two two more questions. One is, what can we look forward to with season six of Portlandia? Well, I think it will be in some ways a continuation of season five in terms of, you know. <clears throat> spending one episode exploring one story or one theme with multiple characters kind of um, exploring different aspects of that theme. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about where we're going. There's going to be a lot more Fred and Carrie. We didn't do a lot of Fred and Carrie season five, and there'll be a lot this year. Oh, that's good. And uh, just finally, I did talk, uh, I'm not sure if you remember this, but I did talk uh, with Fred the other day about uh, Washing Dishes Project um sitcom he said he can't say much about it um but he says it is happening yeah Yeah. well i can concur i can 
yeah washing that's dishes good. yeah mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. Good, good to hear. And I'm sure Goldo will be the first to break uh, the development deal when it comes when it comes out. Um, yeah. Well, you'll yeah. Or if you buy a new dishwasher, <laughs> you'll yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, instead of buying cable, instead of buying cable, you have to buy a dishwasher. It's like a new model. It's oh, a new so model. Of new model of television. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a new Emmy category for that too. Like the, the the best dishwasher programming. I think so too. I think that's very compelling. We'll look for that in 2016. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much for giving up your time for us today again, Carrie. All the best with the Emmys, all the best with Portlandia, and uh, have fun with Fred on season six. I will. Thanks for chatting. Have a good day. No, no worries. You too.